St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Rita and Dominic Pizamenti from North York, Ontario in honour of their 50th wedding anniversary and in thanksgiving for their four daughters, three son-in-laws and seven grandchildren. The second is the Wilson, Wilson family from St. Catharines, Ontario in thanksgiving for blessings received. The third is an anonymous donor from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for living and deceased family members and for peace on earth. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. So let us begin in the way we should begin all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. The Gospel today tells us a wonderful story of forgiveness and healing. So as we begin, let us ask that the Lord will forgive us our many sins and help us to be avenues of healing in our world. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Beloved, while the promise of entering God's rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For indeed, the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. As in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest, though his works were finished at the foundation of the world. For in one place he speaks about the seventh day as follows, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place it says, they shall not enter my rest. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. The word of the Lord. Veterans. 
ancestors have told us. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might. The next generation shall rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. so that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Do The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the house. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a man who was paralyzed, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man who was paralyzed, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the one who was paralyzed, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man 
has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your house. And the man stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. This week, according to our liturgical calendar, we have begun ordinary time. Almost two-thirds of the church year is put into this category. It's a good reminder to all of us that while we may sometimes be blessed to have special moments of a deep encounter with God, most of the time God speaks to us through the ordinary events of everyday life. And often the Holy Spirit whispers to us very quietly. The gospel today begins with something very ordinary. Jesus is tired from traveling around to the many villages on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. And, return, and he returns for a time of rest to the home of Peter's mother-in-law in the town of Capernaum. But many people heard he was back and they went out looking for him at the house where he was staying. How do you react when you are tired and visitors unexpectedly pop in to see you? I know there's times when I'm happy to see unexpected visitors, but there's other times when I just want to say, please go home, don't bother me now. However, Jesus welcomed them, and he also welcomes us whenever we decide there is time to fit him into our schedule. But sometimes it's true to say he also surprises us by just dropping by unexpectedly in someone who crosses our path. Among those who have heard that Jesus is there are four friends who lovingly carry a friend of theirs to meet him. They firmly believe that if they can only get their friend close to Jesus, he will heal him. The place is jammed, but they are determined. And so they climb up to the roof and lower their friend down from above to the spot where Jesus is. Their love and faith inspire Jesus to act. This story is a great example of the power of intercessory prayer that we can offer up for others, especially when several of us pray for the same intention or the same person and lift them up into the presence of Jesus, asking for his help. You no doubt notice that Jesus does not immediately perform a physical healing. Instead, he goes to the heart of the matter, to where all of us need to be set free from the power of sin in our lives. For sin can take its toll on our physical health and paralyze our spirits as well. In Jesus' day, all sickness was indeed seen to be the result of sin. So Jesus turns to the paralytic and says, your sins are forgiven. Some of those who are listening react in horror for they believe that only God could forgive sins, and God would only do this at the end of time. So in their hearts they angrily thought, who does this person think that he is, that he can forgive sins? Only God can do that. They are unknowingly revealing the true identity of the person who is standing before them. For Jesus is indeed the very presence of God among us. Jesus then asked them a question. What is, easy, what is it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or pick up your mat and walk. Of course, it's easier to say the first, your sins are forgiven. Because when we say your sins are forgiven, no one can tell if it has really happened or not. But if you say to someone, get up and walk and nothing happens, 
then everybody around immediately knows that you are a fraud. So here in today's story, Jesus performs a physical healing to show that he does indeed have the power to forgive sins as well. People no longer need to wait until the end of time because in and through Jesus, we can experience the mercy of God now and have our spirit set free. Jesus forgives us so that like the paralyzed man today, we too can let go of the heavy mats and burdens that bind our spirits and walk forward with a deeper sense of freedom, knowing that we are loved by God, not as we want to be, but as we are with all our limitations and sinfulness. And then we too are called to be signs of God's love and forgiveness to those around us. And this example is certainly something that the world desperately needs today. So let us now turn to God and pray, not only for ourselves, but for the whole church and for the whole world. For Pope Francis, that he may have a safe journey to the Philippines and that the faith of many will be strengthened by his visit there. We pray to the Lord. That there may be a growth in understanding, mutual respect and cooperation between members of the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faith communities throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may be instruments of forgiveness and that each of us may reveal the love of Christ by our actions and concern for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the intentions of all from coast to coast who participate in this Eucharist with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, listen to our prayers, those we have expressed and those still within each of our hearts, for we ask in faith in the name of Jesus the Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And let us pray. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, clergy, religious, lay leaders, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. Yeah,